Section 2 of the World's Famous Orations, Volume 2. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The World's Famous Orations, Volume 2. Hannibal, Addressed to His Soldiers. Footnote. Delivered on the eve of Ticino in 218 B.C. Reported by Levy. Spillen and Edmund's translation. A Latin oration, in the sense that Levy reproduced in Latin form and spirit what he had been told that Hannibal said to his soldiers. End of footnote. Born in 247 B.C., died about 183 went to Spain with his father in 238, succeeded Hasdrubal in 221, completed the conquest of Spain in 219, gained the battles of Ticino, Trebia, Trasimene, and Canae in Italy in 218 to 216, marched against Rome in 211, recalled to Africa in 203, defeated by Scipio Africanus at Zama in 202, exiled about 195, committed suicide. If, soldiers, you shall by and by, in judging of your own fortune, preserve the same feelings which you experienced a little before in the example of the fate of others, we have already conquered. For neither was that merely a spectacle, but, as it were, a certain representation of your condition. And I know not whether fortune has not thrown around you still stronger chains and more urgent necessities than around your captives. On the right and left two seas enclose you, without your possessing even a single ship for escape. The river Po around you, the Po larger and more impetuous than the Rhone, the Alps behind, scarcely passed by you when fresh and vigorous, hem you in. Here, soldiers, where you have first met the enemy, you must conquer or die. And the same fortune which has imposed the necessity of fighting holds out to you, if victorious, rewards than which men are not wont to desire greater, even from the immortal gods. If we were only about to recover by our valor Sicily and Sardinia, wrested from our fathers, the recompense would be sufficiently ample. But whatever, acquired and amassed by so many triumphs, the Romans possess, all, with its masters themselves, will become yours. To gain this rich reward, hasten then, and seize your arms with the favor of the gods. Long enough, in pursuing cattle among the desert mountains of Lusitania and Celtiberia, you have seen no emolument from so many toils and dangers. It is time to make rich and profitable campaigns, and to gain the great reward of your labors, after having accomplished such a length of journey over so many mountains and rivers, and so many nations in arms. Footnote. Lusitania. Now called Portugal. End of footnote. Here fortune has granted you the termination of your labors. Here she will bestow a reward worthy of the service you have undergone. Nor in proportion as the war is great in name ought you to consider that the victory will be difficult. A despised enemy has often maintained a sanguinary contest, and renowned states and kings have been conquered by a very slight effort. For, Setting aside only the splendor of the Roman name, what remains in which they can be compared to you? To pass over in silence your service for twenty years, distinguished by such valor and success, you have made your way to this place from the pillars of Hercules, from the ocean and the remotest limits of the world, advancing victorious through so many of the fiercest nations of Gaul and Spain you will fight with a raw army, which this very summer was beaten, conquered, and surrounded by the Gauls, as yet unknown to its general, and ignorant of him. Shall I compare myself? 
almost born and certainly bred in the tent of my father, that most illustrious commander, myself the subjugator of Spain and Gaul, the conqueror too not only of the Alpine nations, but, what is much more, of the Alps themselves, with this six months general, the deserter of his army, to whom, if any one, having taken away their standards, should today show the Carthaginians and Romans, I am sure that he would not know of which army he was consul. Footnote At the age of nine, Hannibal had begged his father to take him with him in a campaign from Carthage to Spain. Before going, he swore on the altar of sacrifice eternal enmity to Rome. End of footnote I do not regard it, soldiers, as of small account that there is not a man among you before whose eyes I have not often achieved some military exploit, and to whom, in like manner, I, the spectator and witness of his valor, could not recount his own gallant deeds, particularized by time and place. With soldiers who have a thousand times received my praises and gifts, I, who was the pupil of you all before I became your commander, will march out in battle array against those who are unknown to and ignorant of each other. On whatever side I turn my eyes, I see nothing but what is full of courage and energy. A veteran infantry, cavalry, both those with and those without the bridle, composed of the most gallant nations. You, our most faithful and valiant allies, you Carthaginians, who are about to fight as well for the sake of your country as from the justice resentment. We are the assailants in the war, and descend into Italy with hostile standards, about to engage so much more boldly and bravely than the foe, as the confidence and courage of the assailants are greater than those of him who is defensive. Besides, suffering, injury, and indignity inflame and excite our minds. They first demanded me, your leader, for punishment, and then all of you who have laid siege to Saguntum, and had we been given up, they would have visited us with the severest tortures. That most cruel and haughty nation considers everything its own, and at its own disposal, it thinks it right that it should regulate with whom we are to have war, with whom peace. It circumscribes and shuts us up by the boundaries of mountains and rivers which we must not pass, and then does not adhere to those boundaries which it appointed. Pass not the Iberus, have nothing to do with the Saguntines. Saguntum is on the Iberus, you must not move a step in any direction. Is it a small thing that you take away my most ancient provinces, Sicily and Sardinia? Will you take Spain also? And should I withdraw thence, you will cross over into Africa. Will cross, did I say. They have sent the two consuls of this year, one to Africa, the other to Spain. There is nothing left to us in any quarter except what we can assert to ourselves by arms. Those may be cowards and dastards who have something to look back upon, whom flying through safe and unmolested roads their own lands and their own country will receive. There is a necessity for you to be brave, and, since all between victory and death is broken off from you by inevitable despair, either to conquer, or, if fortune should waver, to meet death rather in battle than in flight. If this be well fixed and determined in the minds of you all, I will repeat, you have already conquered. No stronger incentive to victory has been given to man by the immortal gods. End of section 2